The Cases That Haunt Us is a book by uh, John E. Douglas and Mark L. Shaker. It is quite different from his other books. This one is about unsolved cases. So all of the, um, all of the stories that he talks about in this uh, are unsolved. Uh, but the last one with John Benet Ramsey is the only one where he was personally involved. So the rest of them are just conjecture, and that gives it a completely different vibe because he talks about how, like, since, you know, the case can never be solved and never will be, maybe, it doesn't really matter if he just, you know, talks about it and has some conjecture about it. So the first case we talk about is Jack the Ripper, and uh, he talks about uh, different parts of the cases that we don't really know. I'm not too familiar on Jack the Ripper, but he goes into like all the different kills and like uh, he, he theorizes that some of the letters are fake, that only one of the letters was real uh, because the other ones are, could have been written by a reporter just to like, you know, make things grandiose. But uh, he starts narrowing down actual like people, suspects. There's a couple of Looney Bin people. He, he suspects that Jack the Ripper might have been a Jew. Uh, like a lesser known person and not just a butcher or a surgeon but could be anyone who works in like with shoes or something like that so there's a lot of interesting stories about that the next one was the lizzie borden case where everyone talks about that rhyme about uh, lizzie borden chopping up her parents but uh she was never convicted for that and he thinks that she might have done it but we'll never know and that's a really cool interesting thing there's a lot of movies that are based off of the lizzie borden story about her having like a lesbian relationship with the maid lady. But uh, this one was, uh, there was a lot of interesting little facts too. Like the father was really cheap to the point where he made a mutton stew and they couldn't finish it, but he demanded they keep eating it over the course of several days. And then they all got food poisoning because he was just that cheap. Uh, that was really funny, you know. There's just little little tidbits you don't know because he looked into the cases a lot. So that was interesting. The next one was the Lindbergh baby, which uh, was a really long chapter actually. Um, and they, they really couldn't, uh, this one was less interesting because we, we know how the Lindbergh baby ends up, but we don't know who did it. So he starts going into like the, the possible suspects and like who got involved. And it's not as interesting because, you know, they, they caught someone who may or may have not had something to do with it, but they'll never know if he had partners or not. And that, this one wasn't as interesting, but it was, you know, still, still enjoyable, but not as interesting because... It's a kidnapping story. Well, the next one is the Zodiac, which is a really big chapter. This one was really interesting because of the way Zodiac would write the little notes and things like that. And they had like the suspect, uh, the, the man who had a heart attack before he could get questioned. Um, they really go into like how the Zodiac killings influenced the movie Dirty Harry, which is my favorite film. Uh, but also other parts of the case, like the uh, the cryptolog things, like the they had a cipher that he would send to the paper and challenge people to... Uh, he would challenge the public to like solve it so he can get his next thing and he had like his spree murders where he would shoot them and rob them and stab them it was really interesting I'm um, definitely gonna check out the Robert Graysmith book uh, if I can find it it's uh, pretty good so the next part of the book is interesting because they're like a lot smaller chapters and when I say chapters I don't mean that they mean like it's like a couple, like maybe 10 pages each. I don't even know because I, I listen to it on audiobook. But uh, there, the first one was The Black Dahlia, which is really disturbing. Uh, not much about this case was given, but it was just probably the most like graphic part of the book. So trigger warning for that in terms of violence. Uh, the next one was the Laurentia Bembenic case, which was really cool. It was about a police officer, female who uh, had well, tried to sue the uh, department for sexual harassment, and then she was fingered for killing the ex-wife of her new husband. And she escaped from prison, and she basically was hiding out in Canada. It was really interesting. Uh, people were, were giving her a really uh, fairy tale vibes because she broke out of prison with a new lover. It was a really interesting case. Um, I don't know why this one was included, because they solved the, oh, because, okay. So she was convicted of the whole killing the ex-wife, but they could—they weren't really sure because the she already had bad blood with the police department, so they might have thrown her under the bus for that. So, um, but this—I uh, don't know who else could have done it because she had she was there and she had the access to the murder weapon. But I don't think this one should have been included. But it was one of the more interesting short chapters, so I didn't mind that. And then there was the Boston Strangler, another really short one, where this one guy in prison—he was like a rapist. Uh, he said he was the Boston Strangler, but John thinks that he wasn't. He just took the uh, he just took the uh, credit for it, and they'll never know who did it because yeah, it was another short chapter. 
And then uh, the last one was the John Bonet Ramsey case, which he was part of. This one was pretty sad because, you know, a lot of people like to conjecture that the uh, parents did it, but then he goes into great detail as to absolve them of it because, you know, he met them and everything, so he was there. This is the only case where he was there, so he has, like, the first-hand experience. So he goes over all of his, like, analysis of how, to, uh, of, of how they couldn't have done it, and he does a really thorough job of explaining why. There's a lot of details that he goes into that don't make sense if they were to do it. And, um, you know, he, he theorizes that it was a friend of the family who's been to the house before who wanted to get back at the dad, so he killed the daughter to get at him. So um, the cases that haunt us is a pretty interesting collection of uh, uh, unsolved cases. I like this one a lot because it was a lot... Um, it was sort of a starting point for you to jump into other books about the topics. It's just a light sort of... Uh, his thoughts on these different cases, the, the last one being the most important because, you know, he was there. But, uh, yeah, this one was a lot more easy to read. It wasn't too heavy. So I give uh, The Cases That Haunt Us a three and a half out of five.